When I was very young, I really enjoyed movies, but my brain wasn't yet able to comprehend the fact that they were constructed by human beings. I remember one lazy day, my dad suggested to my sister and I that we should make a movie, and that really confused me, so he sat my sister and I down at a table and told us to make up a conversation. Every time one of us said something, he would switch the camera and take a new shot. It was at this point that I understood that in order to make a film, you take different shots and edit them together to make a story. What I ate was, was a roll, turkey, cranberry sauce, and another roll. Eventually I was given my own video camera and I would just film random stuff. My brother and I made up a character called Farmer Bob, played by him, and I would just film him playing this character. I'm gonna slide on the ice. Let's ah! not do that again. Because I didn't know how to edit yet, typically each episode, quote unquote, of this show was one continuous shot where I held the camera and he would walk around and make up some sort of story just with one video file. This is the end of the Farmer Bob joke. Tune in next time to see me watch my favorite movie. For a lot of my childhood, that's basically what I did, because I just didn't know how to edit things. I would just film my friends or my family members doing random stuff, and I'm pretty sure it annoyed just about everyone. Another thing I did occasionally was make puppet videos with my dad. These were very Jim Henson inspired. We would always have super ambitious puppet videos, and we hardly ever finished them, but there are a few that are finished that, that are still on my YouTube channel. I then got a Nintendo DSi and made cartoons using my own characters. These were animated over audio from other things like Spongebob or Family Guy. I'm a dude. I focused on that for a while and then I discovered the Rich Alvarez channel which was a huge inspiration for me. Inspired by Rich Alvarez, I created a comedy show called Tom Grimm. This was meant to parody pretty much whatever I was into at the time, including video games or movies. Not only that, but I was super into making sketches at the time, and a lot of them were just commercials for Nintendo games. They didn't even sponsor me, I just made commercials for them because I thought it was fun, I guess. One of them was a commercial for the Nintendo 2DS that I did with my sister, where all the information is intentionally misleading and wrong. I'm proud of that video. I still think it's funny and I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish with it. Hey Grace, so you know you can turn the 3D off on the 3DS, right? Shut up, Nathan! And I also made tons of Let's Plays with my brother playing various games at this point in time. I then started something new, which was reviewing movies. I honestly don't ever go back and watch my old reviews. It's genuinely too hard for me to do. I cringe just way too much. Later on in my film reviewing career, I tried way too hard to be like Ralph the Movie Maker, and I put skits in my reviews. So basically all my reviews were a mesh between Chris Stuckman and Ralph the Movie Maker. At least I tried to be creative while making them, even though like 80% of my opinions from back then are no longer accurate to how I feel today. I made most of those videos private because some people were commenting on them saying my opinion was stupid, and they were opinions that I didn't even have anymore, so... It was like I didn't want my false opinions to be on my YouTube channel still. It wasn't until I was 17 that I tried to make my first serious short film through high school. It was called The Wild and was basically a guy going through the five stages of grief in the woods. This movie also had no humor, which all my other stuff had humor. They were all comedy. So this is a very big departure to the stuff I had made before then and it was the complete opposite of the stuff I made before then. I will always remember this time of my life with great fondness because I was finally doing what I'd always wanted to do. Even though I look back on the wild and I think it's pretty bad now, it doesn't hold up very well, I just remember how happy I was to be making movies at the time and so I have a fondness for it even though it's not a great movie. I was super ambitious, super cocky, very pretentious at the time and so I made another film called Only the Lonely. I think this movie is definitely a lot better than The Wild. Uh, it touched on mental health topics, and it was a very visual film with even less dialogue than The Wild. Both films didn't have a lot of dialogue, and only The Lonely had very minimal dialogue. 
It also didn't have much of a script. We did a lot of improvising on the actual shoot days. It really took off in my local community and it's been used by a mental health organization for employees for training. I'm really proud of that and I just hope that in some way I was able to help people with this film. I made a director's cut recently where I cut all the dialogue out and fixed some stuff up and I think the director's cut is a lot better than the original cut. After that, I made a really ambitious 30-minute horror film that was heavily inspired by Stanley Kubrick and a whole bunch of other horror stuff. It kind of feels like several movies put into one, and although I hate some aspects of it, I'm ultimately proud of what was accomplished with it. Like Only the Lonely, this was also a lot of improvising on the shoot days rather than excessive planning beforehand. Making this movie was a really positive summer for me, and the people I was working with just weren't busy at this time in their life. It was like a great thing where we had a lot of talented people that were able to commit to making this project. There's also some scripts that I had from back then that never saw the light of day. I was going to do a prequel to my horror movie, Paul, and uh, that never saw the light of day. There's also a script that I wrote that was kind of a blend between La La Land and Baby Driver. And I actually did a scene for that movie. We did a demo scene and I was going to film the whole thing. But it was just way too ambitious and there was no way I was going to be able to pull it off. Then I went to college and my film for freshman year was called Forgiveness. I did this film with Devin, a college friend. This was mostly his script and his story, but I helped him write it and I directed it with him. He also starred in it as the main character. We shot it and edited it over a span of three days, which is why so much of it seems very rushed. Again, I was really pretentious at the time and not very receptive to feedback. And I thought it would be cool if I had a whole conversation play out in one continuous shot like a play. This shot goes on for three minutes without cutting. And it's a good showcase of why that's typically not a good idea to do that with film. Recently, I did a silent film edit of Forgiveness, and I think it's significantly better than the original cut. If you want something good, I would recommend checking out the silent film edit that I did. Uh, don't check out the real thing, <laughs> unless you really want to see something not too good. The next major narrative project that I did was Shoulder Angels. This was about an abusive relationship, and it covered similar mental health themes to Only the Lonely, but I manifested depression and anxiety as physical characters. I'm really proud of this one. I think the concept was really well executed. Uh, I was so proud of it that I decided I wanted to make a sequel. I wrote a whole script for the second film where the angel characters were expanded a lot further, and the film was going to focus very closely on how the lead character was coping with her life after the events of the first film. We filmed a bunch of stuff, and then unfortunately an integral actor left the project unexpectedly. And I cancelled the film for a while, until I had the idea to write new scenes and substantially change the narrative. A lot of themes were changed around, and it shifted into a film that explored toxic masculinity and the gender expectations of men. The title became Men Don't Cry. I think this was a blessing in disguise, and it made the film a lot better than it was before. Then I remember that Tom Grimm was never finished, and I thought about the idea of trying to finish it now as an adult with a huge time jump. So I had to kind of channel my younger self and write new material for an amateur comedy show I created when I was 13. It was interesting trying to turn my brain back to that younger version of myself. Technically, Tom Grimm altogether makes 52 minutes, so I've kind of made a feature film that starts off with me at 13 and ends with me at 21. I mean, a warrior doesn't have a dot po bashagaga. <laughs> Let's try that again. If you want to watch it, the whole thing is on YouTube. I also did a silent film version of that as well. That was a lot of fun to edit, so I'd recommend checking that out. And that brings us to today. Right now, I'm working on a Christmas-themed film. I'm actually co-writing and co-directing this movie with someone else, and it's gone really well. I finally took advantage of the college resources at my disposal, and I was able to get a big crew of film students working on this movie. I think it's easily the best thing I've ever done. I'm guessing this movie will come out around Christmas time in 2022 to keep up with the seasonal theme. Uh, right now I'm kind of just playing it by ear. I don't really know when I'm going to release it. But after this project, I don't know what's next for me. In fact, I've actually been trying to accept the fact that this might be the last film I ever make. I'm graduating college, which means I won't have the same resources I had before. If I want to make something else, I'll have to start over with a new crew of new people, and that sounds really difficult. And I think that's part of why I'm making this video. This video could be encompassing the beginning of my film career all the way until the very end of my film career. 
I hope that's not the case. I'd love to make more stuff. I just don't know if that will be possible given the trajectory my life is on right now. Making films is truly the most cathartic, therapeutic thing I could ever do. Shoulder Angels and Men Don't Cry were both inspired by a very close, toxic friendship in my life, and I use those films to cope with my grief. So I hope my film career isn't over, even though I'm worried that it very well could be the end. So if this does end up being the last film I ever do, I just want to thank everyone for supporting my films over the years, liking them, commenting on them. Making films is definitely the thing that makes me the happiest, so I really do hope I can continue making them. Either that, or I can somehow still foster my talents in some way and continue doing stuff with film work, or doing just videos for YouTube. I've been thinking about trying to make YouTube videos more consistently, so maybe that can be a way I can utilize my filmmaking talents, I guess. Hopefully you'll stick around for whatever else that I have in store for this channel. Um, I think I have like 360 subscribers or so, and that's not the biggest amount compared to like a lot of other YouTubers, but uh, it's it still means a lot to me that that many people have stuck around and watched my stuff. So, thank you. And that's really all I have to say. I'm excited to show you guys this film when I put it out. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone. <laughs> Is that a cut? <laughs>